Hello guys. So today is kind of a big day because we're going to read chapter three and answer all the questions for it. So I have my book open to chapter three. It's called Escape. The barn was very large. It was very old. It smelled of hay and it smelled of manure. It smelled of the per perspiration of tired horses and the wonderful sweet breath of patient cows. It often had a sort of peaceful smell, as though nothing bad could happen ever again in the world. It smelled of grain and of harness dressing and of axle grease and of rubber boots and of new rope. And whenever the cat was given a fish head to eat, the barn would smell of fish. But mostly it smelled of hay, for there was always hay in the great loft up overhead. And there was always hay being pitched down to the cows and the horses and the sheep. The barn was pleasantly warm in the winter when the animals spent most of their time indoors. And it was pleasantly cool in summer when the big doors stood wide open to the breeze. The barn had stalls on the main floor for the workhorses, tie ups on the main floor for the cows, a sheep fold down below for the sheep, a pig pen down below for Wilbur, and it was full of all sorts of things that you find in barns, ladders, grindstones, pitchforks, monkey wrenches, scythes, lawn mowers, snow shovels, ax handles, milk pails, water buckets, empty grain sacks, and rusty rat traps. It was the kind of barn that swallows like to build their nests in. It was the kind of barn that children like to play in. And the whole thing was owned by Fern's uncle, Mr. Homer L. Zuckerman. Wilbur's new home was in the lower part of the barn directly underneath the cows. Mr. Zuckerman knew that a manure pile is a good place to keep a young pig. Pigs need warmth and it was warm and comfortable down there in the barn cellar on the south side. Fern came almost every day to visit him. She found an old milking stool that had been discarded and she placed the stool in the sheep fold next to Wilbur's pen. Here she sat quietly during the long afternoons, thinking and listening and watching Wilbur. The sheep soon got to know her and trust her. So did the geese who lived with the sheep. All the animals trusted her. She was so quiet and friendly. Mr. Zuckerman did not allow her to take Wilbur out and he did not allow her to get into the pig pen. But he told Fern that she could sit on the stool and watch Wilbur as long as she wanted to. It made her happy just to be near the pig and it made Wilbur happy to know that she was sitting there right outside his pen. But he never had any fun, no walks, no rides, no swims. One afternoon in June, when Wilbur was almost two months old, he wandered out into his small yard outside the barn. Fern had not arrived for her usual visit. Wilbur stood in the sun feeling lonely and bored. There's never anything to do around here, he thought. He walked slowly to his food trough and sniffed to see if anything had been overlooked at lunch. He found a small strip of potato skin and ate it. His back itched, so he leaned against the fence and rubbed against the boards. When he tired of this, he walked indoors, climbed to the top of the manure pile and sat down. He didn't feel like going to sleep. He didn't feel like digging. He was tired of standing still, tired of laying down. I'm less than two months old and I'm tired of living, he said. He walked out to the yard again. When I'm out here, he said, there's no place to go but in. When I'm indoors, there's no place to go but out in the yard. That's where you're wrong, my friend, my friend, said a voice. Wilbur looked through the fence and saw the goose standing there. You don't have to stay in that dirty little, dirty little, dirty little yard, said the goose, who talked rather fast. One of the boards is loose. Push on it. Push, push, push on it and come on out. What? said Wilbur. Say it slower. At the risk of repeating myself, said the goose, 
I suggest that you come on out. It's wonderful out here. Did you say that a board was loose? That I did, that I did, said the goose. Wilbur walked up to the fence and saw that the goose was right. One board was loose. He put his head down, shut his eyes and pushed. The board gave way. In a minute, he had squeezed through the fence and was standing in the long grass outside his yard. The goose chuckled. How does it feel to be free? She asked. I like it, said Wilbur. That is, I guess I like it. Actually, Wilbur felt queer to be outside his fence with nothing between him and the big world. Where do you think I'd better go? Anywhere you like, anywhere you like, said the goose. Go down through the orchard, root up the side, go down through the garden, get up the radishes, root up everything, eat grass, look for corn, look for oats, run all over, skip and dance, jump in France, go down through the orchard and stroll through the woods. The world is a wonderful place when you're young. I can see that, replied Wilbur. He gave a jump in the air, twirled, ran a few steps, stopped, looked around, sniffed the smells of the afternoon, and then set off walking down through the orchard. Pausing in the shade of an apple tree, he put his strong snout into the ground and began pushing, digging, and rooting. He felt very happy. He had plowed up quite a piece of ground before anyone noticed him. Mrs. Zuckerman was the first to see him. She saw him from the kitchen, from the kitchen window, and she immediately shouted for the men. Homer, she cried, pigs out, Lurvy, pigs out. Homer, Lurvy, pigs out. He's down under their apple tree. Now the trouble starts, thought Wilbur. Now I'll catch it. The goose heard the racket and she too started hollering. Run, 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 downhill, make for the woods, the woods, she shouted to Wilbur. They'll never, never, never catch you in the woods. The cocker spaniel heard the commotion and he ran out from the barn to join the chase. Mr. Zuckerman heard and he came out of the machine shed where he was mending a tool. Lurvy, the hired man, heard the noise and came up from the asparagus patch where he was pulling weeds. Everybody walked toward Wilbur and Wilbur didn't know what to do. The woods seemed a long way off and anyway, he had never been down there in the woods and wasn't sure if he would like it. Get around behind him, Lurvy, said Mr. Zuckerman, and drive him toward the barn. I'll go and get a bucket of slops. The news of Wilbur's escape spread rapidly among the animals on the place. Whenever any creature broke loose on Zuckerman's farm, the event was of great interest to the others. The goose shouted to the nearest cow that Wilbur was free, and soon all the cows knew. Then one of the cows told one of the sheep, and soon all the sheep knew. The lambs learned about it from their mothers. The horses in their stalls in the barn picked up their ears when they heard the goose hollering, and soon the horses had caught on to what was happening. Wilbur's out, they said. Every animal stirred and lifted its head and became excited to know that one of his friends had got free and was no longer penned up or tied fast. Wilbur didn't know what to do or which way to run. It seemed as though everybody was after him. If this is what it's like to be free, he thought, I believe I'd rather be penned up in my own yard. The Cocker Spaniel was sneaking up on him from one side. Lurvy, the hired man, was sneaking up on him from the other side. Mr. Zuckerman stood ready to head him off if he started for the garden. And now Mr. Zuckerman was coming down toward him carrying a pail. This is really awful, thought Wilbur. Why doesn't Fern come? He began to cry. The goose took command and began to give orders. Don't just stand there, Wilbur. Dodge about, dodge about, cried the goose. Skip around, run toward me, slip in and out, in and out, in and out, make for the woods, twist and turn. The cocker spaniel sprang for Wilbur's hind leg. Wilbur jumped and ran. Lurvy reached out and grabbed Mrs. Zuckerman, screamed at Lurvy. The goose cheered for Wilbur. Wilbur dodged between Lurvy's legs. Lurvy missed Wilbur and grabbed the spaniel instead. Nicely done, nicely done, cried the goose. Try it again, try it again. Run downhill, suggested the cows. Run toward me, yelled the gander. Run uphill, cried the sheep. Turn and twist, honked the goose. Jump and dance, said the rooster. Look out for Lurvy, called the cows. Look out for Zuckerman, yelled the gander. Watch out for the dog, cried the sheep. Listen to me, listen to me, screamed the goose. Poor Wilbur was dazed and frightened by this hullabaloo. He didn't like being the center of all this fuss. 
He tried to follow the instructions his friends were giving him, but he couldn't run downhill and uphill at the same time. He couldn't turn and twist when he was jumping and dancing, and he was crying so hard he could barely see anything that was happening. After all, Wilbur was a very young pig, not much more than a baby, really. He wished Fern were there to take him in her arms and comfort him. When he looked up and saw Mr. Zuckerman standing quite close to him, holding a pail of warm slops, he felt relieved. He lifted his snows and sniffed. The smell was delicious. Warm milk, potato skins, wheat middlings, Kellogg's cornflakes, and a popover left from the Zuckerman's breakfast. Come, pig, said Mr. Zuckerman, tapping the pail. Come, pig. Wilbur took a step toward the pail. No, 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 said the goose. It's an old pail trick, Wilbur. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. He's trying to lurk you back into captivity. He's appealing to your stomach. Wilbur didn't care. The food smelled appetizing. He took another step toward the pail. Pig, pig, said Mr. Zuckerman in a kind voice and began walking slowly toward the barnyard, looking all about him innocently, as if he didn't know that a little white pig was following along behind him. You'll be sorry, 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 called the goose. Wilbur didn't care. He kept walking toward the pail of slops. Yo, Mr. Freedom, honked the goose. An hour of freedom is worth a barrel of slops. Wilbur didn't care. When Mr. Zuckerman reached the pig pen, he climbed over the fence and poured the slops into the trough. Then he pulled the loose board away from the fence so that there was a wide hole for Wilbur to walk through. Reconsider, reconsider, cried the goose. Wilbur paid no attention. He stepped through the fence into his yard. He walked to the trough and took a long drink of slops sucking in the milk hungrily and chewing the popover. It was good to be home again. While Wilbur ate, Lurvy fetched a hammer and some eight penny nails and nailed the board in place. Then he and Mr. Zuckerman leaned lazily on the fence and Mr. Zuckerman scratched Wilbur's back with a stick. He's quite the pig, said Lurvy. Yes, he'll make a good pig, said Mr. Zuckerman. Wilbur heard the words of praise. He felt the warm milk inside his stomach. He felt the pleasant rubbing of the stick along his itchy back. He felt peaceful and happy and sleepy. This had been a tiring afternoon. It was still only about four o'clock, but Wilbur was ready for bed. I'm really too young to go out into the world alone, he thought as he lay down. Now I'm gonna go to your worksheets for chapter three, and I'm gonna help you with them. So the first one is a quick write. It says, do you ever long to be somewhere besides where you are? Explain. So do you ever wanna be somewhere that you're not? Like sometimes I wanna be in Florida with my family, um, but I can't be all the time. Or sometimes I wish I was on a beach in another country, or sometimes I wish I was at an ice cream store instead of at my house. So is there ever a place that you wanna be and why? Let's look at the multiple choice. Number one says, who advises Wilbur to escape? Now I remember that it's the goose, but I'm gonna double check. So I'm gonna go to my book and on page 17, you see the goose starts talking to him. Wilbur looked through the fence and saw the goose standing there. You don't have to stay in that dirty little, dirty little, dirty little yard, said the goose who talked rather fast. One of the boards is loose. Push on it, push, push, push on it and come on out. So it was the goose. So the correct answer is A, the goose. Number two says, how does Wilbur feel when he is put back in the barnyard? And I remember him being tired and kind of happy that he was back, but I'm gonna go in my book and double check for text evidence. So we see on the very last page of this chapter, page 24, 
Yes, he'll make a good pig, said Mr. Zuckerman. Wilbur heard the words of praise. He felt the warm milk inside his stomach. He felt the pleasant rubbing of the stick along his itchy back. He felt peaceful and happy and sleepy. This had been a tiring afternoon. It was still only about four o'clock, but Wilbur was ready for bed. So he's happy. He is relieved. True or false? Larry thinks that Wilbur is a special pig. I don't remember. I'm gonna go back to my book. I'm at the page, I'm at page 23, I'm at the bottom. He's quite the pig, said Lurvy. So yeah, Lurvy is pretty impressed by, by Wilbur. So I would put true for number one. Number two says, Fern often takes Wilbur out of his pen to play. I'm gonna go look for text evidence. I'm gonna go to page 15 at the bottom all the animals trusted her she was so quiet and friendly mr zuckerman did not allow her to take wilbur out and he did not allow her to get into the pig pen so no she was not allowed to take him out so number two is false number three says wilbur sometimes feels bored and lonely in his new home I remember him saying that, but I'm gonna go look for text evidence anyway. So I'm on page 16, 16 and paragraph two. It says, one afternoon in June, when Wilbur was almost two months old, he wandered out into his small yard outside the barn. Fern had not arrived for her usual visit. Wilbur stood in the sun feeling lonely and bored. So yes, he is lonely and bored at his new home. So number three is true. Number four, the Zuckermans have a Cocker Spaniel. They do have a Cocker Spaniel, but I wanna make sure that I'm right. So I'm gonna go look in the book and find where the Cocker Spaniel first comes out. So I'm on page 18 at the bottom. It says the Cocker Spaniel heard the commotion and he ran out from the barn to join the chase. So true, they do have a Cocker Spaniel. Number five, the other animals get very excited when Wilbur escapes. Do they? I'm on page 19. I am at paragraph three. It says the news of Wilbur's escape spread rapidly among the animals on the place. Whenever any creature broke loose on Zuckerman's farm, the event was of great interest to the others. The goose shouted to the nearest cow that Wilbur was free and soon all the cows knew. Then one of the cows told one of the sheep and soon, soon all of the sheep knew. The lambs learned about it from their mothers. The horses in their stalls in the barn picked up their ears when they heard the goose hollering, and soon the horses had caught on to what was happening. Wilbur's out, they said. Every animal stirred and lifted its head and became excited to know that one of his friends had got free and was no longer pinned up or tied fast. So true, they do get very excited. After that, it says setting analysis. Remember, setting is time and place. Write some words or phrases from the book that describe the barn. Then write about how it makes you feel. So the barn, I'm gonna tell you where to go. I'm not gonna tell you what to write, but I'm gonna tell you where to go. So if you go to pages 13 and 14, the first two pages of the chapter, it tells you all about the barn. So I want you to describe the barn in a few sentences and then tell me how the barn makes you feel. How would you feel if you were stuck there? Okay, so again, you can answer that question with the first two pages of the chapter. Then you have your short answers. And again, I'm not gonna tell you the answers, but I'm gonna tell you where to find them to help you. So number one says, summarize Wilbur's escaping adventure. How does he get lured back into the barnyard and how does he feel upon his return? So his escape starts on page 17. So you probably, because it goes all the way to the end of the chapter. So use words like first, next, then, and last to tell me how he escapes, how he gets back, and how he feels at the very end. And if you need to use more words, then please do. Number two says, why does Wilbur feel lonely and bored at times? support your answer answer with textual evidence. So you have to use the book to support your answer. 
So that one you can find on page 16. So go to page 16 and tell me why is he so bored and lonely? What does the book say? So you could say, this could be a short opinion piece. In my opinion, Wilbur is bored and lonely because, and then tell me why and give me some reasons. Give me some examples. You don't have to do three because it's a short answer. But maybe if you give me two reasons and two examples, that would be great. The next short answer says, in this chapter, the goose encourages Wilbur to go and be free. At first, he likes being free, but then he changes his mind. Why does he change his mind? What do you think it means to truly be free? So again, his whole escape is pages 17 all the way to the end of the chapter. So reread that and tell me, why does he change his mind? Why does he go from being excited to being free to not being so excited anymore? And then tell me, what do you think it means to actually be free? The last page is your vocabulary page. So again, I pulled up your flashcards. So you guys have these two. The first word is discarded. The flashcard for that says thrown away. So discarded, definition is thrown away. Draw a picture of something that's discarded. The next word is racket, which means loud noise. So next to racket, the definition is loud noise. Draw a loud noise. The last one is dazed, which means overwhelmed or confused. So you'll put overwhelmed or confused as the definition and then you will draw something that means or shows me overwhelmed or confused. And then you have to fill in the blanks. So remember, go through all the words. There was such a loud discarded. There was such a loud racket. There was such a loud dazed going on that people were coming out of their homes to see what was going on. Which one goes in there? Which one sounds best? After I fell and bumped my head on the sidewalk, I felt discarded. I felt racket. I felt dazed for a few hours. Which one goes there? The old t-shirt was finally discarded, was finally racket, was finally dazed when it got several holes in it. So fill in the word that goes in those blanks. And then you have to draw a picture of your favorite scene from this chapter and then give it a caption. You guys know what captions are. We did nonfiction text features, even though this book is fiction. Draw a picture of your favorite part of chapter three and then make up a caption at the bottom, okay? Busy day today, guys, but that chapter was really exciting. So I hope you liked it. I liked it a lot. I think that this book is wonderful and I am super excited to see all of your work. So I will talk to you later, bye.